Good morning to all. I am Dr. Bharti Kavita, Assistant Professor, Department of History, Sheshardha College for Women, Salem 16, Tamil Nadu. I am going to present the topic on Ancient Universities in India. The universities of ancient India have a proud history than that of their counterpart in the ancient Western world. At least one of them, Takshashila flourished several centuries before the universities of Alexandria, Athens and Constantinople. The universities of ancient India had also a more impressive teaching and research program. The teachers who taught in the Takshashila, Nalanda and Vikramasala were scholars of high eminence. This is a, a good cordial relationship that existed between them and their students was in, indeed sublime. Such ideal teachers, student relationship had no parallel in the long history of educational thoughts and practices. When we talk about Takshashila, as an, one of the oldest among all the universities in India. And it was well known as a center of learning as early as during 700 BC. The educational activities at this place must have started at least a few centuries earlier. Archaeological findings shows that the city covered an area of six square miles. A copper plate inscription Hearing the name of Takshashila has also been unearthed from the site. The place is situated 20 miles to the west of Raval Pindi. It is a name derived from Taksha, the son of Bharata. Now, it is in northwest Pakistan. And uh, Takshashila came to be known as famous center of higher education because several learned teachers who were recognized as authorities on various subjects resided at the place. Archaeologist Alexander Cunningham discovered this place in the mid-first century AD. Archaeological site, now an UNESCO also declared it as a, a heritage site in 1980. The main aim of this uh, institution is to impart a higher education and the learning of scriptures and ancient books to facilitate the comprehension of the content of Vedas and the sacred books. As I have already pointed out, only higher courses were taught in these institutions and these institutions therefore took students to the end of the knowledge of some particular subjects, taking it up for the secondary stage. The purpose of education, which began at home with the primary education and widened and extended in the education in the ashrama, which imparted what corresponded to the secondary education reaches culmination in these places which impart an education at the university level. According to the system prevalent in the ancient India, primary education was imparted to the children up to 8 years and secondary education covered from 8 to 12 years. Takshashila was the intellectual capital of India. And there was a wide variety of courses offered at Takshashila both in a literary and scientific or technical subject. The term used to denote these two types of courses were Vedas and the Silpas. The study of Vedas probably meant learning them by heart for that was the most important service the Brahmanas rendered to the preservation and the propagation of the Hindu culture. It is very likely that the study of Vedas also included the interpretation and exposition of the content of these sacred books. A number of books had already been written by this time to facilitate the comprehension of the content of the Vedas. The performance of the various rituals and sacrifices were also taught there. 
the study of these ancillary signs had necessarily to proceed the comprehension of the meaning of the Vedas. The study of various references shows that the following crafts were also taught in these universities. Uh, the Vedas like uh, Rig, Eju and Sama Vedas and Silpa means a uh, craft works was taught there. Including the Vedas, some of the six ancillary signs, the signs of correct pronunciation, summary on guiding the performance of various rites and sacrifices, grammar, astronomy, study of um, rhythms and a study of origin of birds were also taught here. A study of various references shows that the following crafts were taught in these universities conveying for law, mathematics, accountancy, agriculture, commerce, cattle breeding, smithy, carpentry, medicine, surgery, archery and allied military arts, astronomy, astrology, magic, snake charming, art of finding hidden treasures, music, dance and painting was also taught in this universities. A Takshashila became famous for a learned teachers and at this place, there had a no objection to collecting the knowledge from whatsoever source it was available, and they were sufficiently broad minded to honor even the foreign uh, students. And each teacher was an institution in himself and enjoyed a complete autonomy in his work. And in, in science, art, and craft, both the theory and practice of the different subject had to be studied and it was well taught and imparted to the students. Usually every theoretical discussion followed a practical performance leading to a more skillful attempt on the part of the students. But actual practice of every art reveals certain important principles and such these had to be postponed and the students had to be left to his own capacities and resourcefulness to find out these. In special science, like a medicine, which in completeness of knowledge could result in disaster, special care was taken to see to it that the students had become a thorough master of the science. All the necessary financial assistance was supplied by the society to teachers who, as a general uh, rule, provided free boarding and lodging to all the students. No student was required to pay any fee on the compulsory basis. Their yes, salary teachers were charged fees on the company basis is to be treated according to scriptures of Manu. There was, however, no financial difficulties that affected the smooth running of the institution for higher learning because everything that was necessary because became easily available. And the spiritual standing, pronunciation, and deep knowledge of a teachers inspired many rich persons to give voluntary help in various ways to this institution. Some well-to-do parents also gave generous monetary help. This was given either at the beginning or at the end of the studies of their children. Their excellence attracted hundreds of the students from all over the continent. But it's unfortunate that we are completely in the dark about the name of the renounced teachers and uh, that is in Takshashila. Even the Jatakas which have supplied to us most of the information regarding the universities are completely silent on this point. And complete democracy uh, reigning in this university and different class and caste were merged in the democracy of learning. A common code of rule and observance prescribed for students irrespective of their social and economic status. Teachers were at the, uh, for the people and offering prayers for receiving such good people. It is great students include Panini, great grammarian of Sanskrit, 
Chanakya, known as Kautilya, and was a famous ministry of Chandragupta Maurya. Um, G, that is Jivaka, famous physician, uh, described as a student of this university. He was an expert in medicine and had studied under a world-renowned physician for a period of seven years. It is said that Jivaka Kur, Emperor Bimbisara, as a result, he was appointed as a physician to the king and to the Buddhist Sanghas. The students who came to learn in ancient Indian universities were approximately 16 and 20 years of age. And I had courses only taught in these universities, and it is famous for uh, higher education. And Taxila offered a wide variety of courses like literary, Vedic, scientist, and technical subjects. Admission was free of all costs. Different castes and classes merged in the democracy of learning. While we talk about the Nalanda, Nala means lotus, the symbol of knowledge, and Da means giving. It is one of the ancient center of learning in India. And it was established in the 5th century by Kumara Gupta I. The Nalanda University is located in Bihar, where Buddha stayed at this place of Nalanda. But after this destruction, the place flourished with a great radiance and prosperity. Thus, although the place had been a great religious and educational center in the days of Nagarjuna in the 2nd century AD and even earlier in the days of Buddha, it became a university only in the earlier half of the 5th century when a stream of solastic a pilgrimage began to flow towards the place. Almost throughout the whole period of existence of this university, it had the rare privilege of enjoying royal patronage. First, it is a residential university in the world with a capacity of 10,000 students and professors. New buildings continued to be erected by the Hindu and Buddhist donors down to the 11th century. Yuan Swan mentioned six monasteries constituting the Nalanda establishment at this time. All these buildings were majesty in their size and height with the richly adorned towers. Archaeological excavation carried out at this place amply bear out the description of artistic wealth of Nalanda. Students from all over the world study at Nalanda. Nalanda, like other university of its type, was an institution which imparted only higher education and accordingly admission was restricted to these who had the necessary background to follow postgraduate study. In particular, the institution was known as a place where learned men from all parts of the country as well as from neighboring nations gathered for getting their doubts solved and for gaining mastery in the art of reputation. Subjects like astronomy, philosophy, Sanskrit, maths, yoga and Vedas were taught. Buddhist as well as non-Buddhist subjects were studied and they are also studied both Mahayana and Hinayana sects of Buddhism. Tantra was a very popular subject at this university because we hear only many scholars writing work on Tantra, others studying them and still other copying and translating them into the language of the Nath. Tantras deal with the use of mystic syllabus and words as well as magic. Other subjects studied in this university were Vedas and their six ancillaries like medicine, grammar, philosophy, law, psychology and other miscellaneous subjects were taught. 
there were some institutions for primary education run by the universities where six years old students were admitted and such students learned grammar of Sanskrit language. The system of logic was also accepted to various other school of thoughts were also studied and astronomy was also taught to the students. And uh, this university consists of uh, three buildings and, uh, and a library uh, consists of three buildings and hundreds and thousands of the books on the religion and literature was, uh, uh, was also available. This university had a large collection of manuscript on various subjects in various languages. And this was greatly helpful in the dissemination of knowledge because we find numerous mention of scholars from abroad copying out a manuscript in the hundreds from these libraries and taking them to their countries. And the learned men from Nalanda were famous all over the country. They defeated many pundits. Uh, they defeated the many pundits belonging to their faith and converted them to the Buddhism. Among the list, we may also include the Chinese traveler Huan Swan, who acquired in this university the knowledge of uh, doctrines. The fact that the distinguished king, like Sri Harsha, sent for pundit from Nalanda, we are ample testimony to the depth of their learning. The pundits of this place were accepted as an authorities even on Hinayana doctrine of Buddhism, although the university championed the cause of Mahayana doctrine. And it is said 1,000 pundits from Nalanda University were present at the assembly held at Kanoj by Sri Harsha to investigate the treaties of Yuan Swap. And it was destroyed a three times by Bakatiya Kilji and rebuilt twice by King Harshavartana. Complete destruction was done by Vakatiya Kilji in 1197 AD. His army burnt alive the monks and the students. The teachers and the students of Nalanda universities were more than 10,000 monks studying at Nalanda and 1,510 were teachers and remaining 8,500 students belonging to various level of attainment and studying various subjects. On average, uh, the number of students per teachers was seven or eight, and it must have been very convenient to give an individual attention to the student. It was attracted many scholars from different parts of the country, and teaching was done through the method of debates and discussion. Students studied Vedas and the fine arts, medicine, mathematics, astrology, politics, and art of warfare. Knowledge considered as a sacred and no fees was charged. Importing an higher education was the highest form of donation. Entrance examination, a system was followed at Nalanda University. There is also a department for primary and secondary education where young students were freely admitted. And for all these students of a very high standard of morality was prescribed and students of Nalanda were taken as a model of morality and during the long existence of 7th century not a single cause of a guilty rebe rebellion has been reported. Begging was prescribed because of its educational advantages as was a cause in Hindu institution. It is an educative value lay in the fact that it is produced in the people a spirit of humanity and renunciation. Nalanda and Taxila was known for freedom and liberty for all the people and it was also seen in its administration of education services. Students were coming from all over the country to learn various subjects. They live at Vidyapet and learn by debates and discussion with teachers and other scholars. When we talk about Angalabi University was situated in Western India, it is an important center of Buddhist learning and championed the class of Hinayana Buddhism. For some time, it has become a rival of Nalanda in the academic field. In the instruction that the Buddhist doctrine, Brahmanical science was also used to taught at this place. 
and overall the religious subjects were also important to the students and subjects like political science, statementships, business, agriculture, administration, theology, law, economics, accountancy was also important to the students. In some cases, students after studying at this university were employed by kings for assisting in the government of their kingdom. The fame of Vallabi had spread over the whole of northern India to such an extent and it was narrated and it was referred to and sent to the people uh, to impart how they are very good in their education field. Very little, however, is known to know about the famous teachers and scholars who lived at that place, excepting name of two uh, was also uh, like the pandas. In about the middle of the 7th century, where Huang Swang visited the place, there were 6,000 monks studying in the university, 100 monasteries were provided for them. The funds necessary for running the university was also available by the citizens of the place, many of whom were very rich and generous. And the fame of Vallabi has spread over the whole of northern India and, and it was an important center of a Buddhist learning. About Vikramashala University, it was started from 800 to 1203 AD. It was founded by King Dharmapala. The Vikramashala Vihara was a famous set of learning situated on the hill out on the bank of Ganga and the place near just near Alatta. The building at Vikramasala were well planned and accommodative. There were 108 temples and six college buildings spread over the one, the lotus petals with the beautiful Mahabodhi temple in the center with its six gates leading to the six colleges. And the, like the other universities, this university also provided only specialized instruction to various subjects at the college level. The standard of attainment, except of alumni, must have been very high because admission was restricted only to those who aspired to become a Buddhist monk who were to preach a Buddhist gospel in far off lands. The courses did not cover all the branches of Hindu science, but special stress was laid grammar, logic, metaphysics, and ritualism. A special significance was attracted to tantras, which consist of religious doctrines. And the subject like the philosophy, grammar, were taught, and this university was also destroyed by Bakatiya Kilji. Thank you.